Terrell Clark, good to have you back on the uptake for another Netroots Nation. This is the third one you've been to. Um, what brings you here? What's inspiring you today? Well, it's great to be back, and thanks, everybody, at the uptake for the great work all of you do. I, Netroots Nation is really exciting. You know, Minnesota, obviously, we've got a strong tradition of grassroots activism, door-to-door, -door, neighbor to neighbor. And what is amazing with Netroots, obviously, is it's taken the technology level. So even if people aren't near each other, we can connect and communicate. We can get past that isolation, and we can actually figure out how we're going to move people forward in a variety of ways. So there's great people here who are ready to you know, change things in our country, and we sorely need it. So last year, you lost the race to Michelle Bachman, who now, not just Minnesotans, but seems like almost all Americans know about and have an opinion about. Um, what did you learn from that race? Well, it, you know, the, the hard thing last cycle was I think there was so much misinformation out there. The right clearly uh, fed the public a bill of goods. And our race was the most expensive race in the country anytime, anywhere. She spent $11 million, and none of it was about anything that she was going to do. And so I think, you know, part of what we all need to continue to do is to look at that really as more of a point in time that we can't let our frustrations or depression or anger get to us. You know, we're now seeing people in Congress who want to gut Social Security and Medicare, that want to redefine rape, that want to do anything besides create a job or help us really seize the jobs of the 21st century. And there is so much at stake that we have to actually make sure we're coming together, don't let the right divide us, and, and, and take our country back. If you had a message to say to perhaps non-Minnesotan, perhaps even rural Christian women who are seeing Michelle Bachman for the first time and I don't know. I don't know what their impressions might be, but what do you have to say to them about the real Michelle Bachman that you know? Well, as as a rural Christian woman, <laughs> there's not a lot there that I recognize um, as a person of faith. She's not alone in this. There are many people out. A lot of the people who came in under the Tea Party banner, uh, you know, it's almost like trying to be a a cheap patriot as opposed to a deep patriot. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of frustration. A lot of things might sound good, or the world that she and others presents is really scary if it were true, but it's just not. And, you know, families are struggling. We're struggling economically. We're worried about if we could send our kids to college. Can we retire? You know, at this point, our road's going to crumble. And we need people who are actually going to help move our country forward, not just try to, to make people afraid. You know, and as a mom, you know, that's not what I want for my kids. I want to make sure that we're thinking about how we're going to strengthen our country and bring people together and and that's certainly something from my faith tradition that I think is an important thing to be pointing out to folks. You've got your eye on a congressional seat again. That's right. I think uh, what we're trying to do is just too important. Uh, you know, while Michelle I think really is a crusader and she'll go off crusading because she hasn't done anything for the people in her district, to me there's just too much at stake right now in our country and for our communities and our families to stop. And so, you know, with the, the tens of thousands of people that were helping me uh, together last time, because unlike her, I know it's not about me. It's about us and what we can do together. I'm running again, but with redistricting, uh, we don't believe that I'm going to be in the same district as her. I, we just have to lose about 100,000 people in the 6th district. So I think that you're, you're targeting the 8th district now, and Chip Kravak, the former, I think, well, I think he was Navy, wasn't he, uh, who unseated Jim Oberstar in 2010 after more than three decades. Um, what, tell, tell us about your perspective on Chip Kravak, and, and how are you going to go after him? Well, this is a guy who's already voted to gut Medicare, who has voted against essential air service, even though he was a former pilot who has taken votes against our communities and growing good jobs. And I think people have a right to be concerned. He hasn't lived in the state very long, and I think it shows. You know, we're about strengthening our communities and strengthening our families. And I think he and a lot of other people won through creating a lot of noise, but a lot of folks in the district in central and northeastern Minnesota are hearing that. It was a lot of noise. And that's not what the job's about, and our families deserve better. He's a freshman in Congress. You would be a freshman in Congress were you to win in 2012. What needs to happen for the Democrats, for you personally and the Democratic Party, to retake the House or be successful? 
really is about us coming together. I've, uh, as I said, a strong grassroots believer. We did an awful lot of that in uh, my state senate campaigns as well as in this last one. So I want to make sure that we're empowering people, that they know that they make a difference. So many people around our country think that their votes don't matter, and they do. But we need to take them seriously and listen to their voices. And I think it's important for us to be standing up for what we believe in, to be bringing people together. And if we do that, we can absolutely take back our country. And that's, you know, the lesson I learned from my grandmother, who happened to be a lifelong Republican, who I'm sure is turning over in her grave right now. She remembered when her mom, she was a schoolgirl, when her mom got the vote. And she would always use that as an example about really how if we can come together, we can change the world. And that's what we got to do now. Um. You mentioned the money that was spent on the race between you and Bachman, a lot of money. Um, you had the likes of Bill Clinton campaigning for you, so you drew a lot of attention as well. Um, how much is that going to help you? I mean, your name is probably not as well known as Michelle Bachman's, obviously. Um, but how much is that notoriety you gained in the last race going to help you now? And is there, are there also finances to help you? Well, certainly an awful lot of people who live in the current district are part of the metro media market, so they would have been seeing up close and personal this race. And I've done a lot of work throughout the region, professionally, personally. My husband and I were longtime youth ministers and did a lot of work throughout the area that's the current 8th. And then also politically, I've campaigned for a number of folks. So I think that what is going to make a difference is taking all parts of the district seriously, helping people make sure that they're going to have a strong advocate in Congress. And not to sound like a broken record, but this is really about what we can do together. It's less about the person and more about what we, we can change. I think a lot of that's going to help. You know, there were almost 50,000 people who contributed or volunteered on our race. And while some of them certainly would have liked to have just seen somebody different, a lot of them really stood together for what we believe in and what we can do and what our possibilities are. You know, I think the right often talks about the first part of the Pledge of Allegiance. They talk about the flag, and they forget that what really this is all about is coming together, being indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And if we're serious about making those changes, we can c overcome anything. And, you know, unlike him, I have a lot of experience working bipartisanly with people work to make sure that we're doing right by our veterans and our seniors and our kids and our families and I think a real strength is is being able to bring people together to make changes. Has Jim Oberstar offered you any advice going forward in this race to reclaim that seat for the Democratic Party? Give him hell. <laughs> Actually he's great you know he's somebody who really have made such a difference for our state and our country, our infrastructure. I mean, he understood that in this economy, getting people back to work, rebuilding our infrastructure, making sure we've got those jobs that can lead us forward, uh, really, really is what it's all about. So certainly that's part of what he's talked about, but he's also talked about my ability to bring people together and that we need to go out and make sure people understand the truth. And that's what I'm going to go do. Terrell Clark, thank you for talking to us about your political life.